Hi, this is Dr. Vev. I will be discussing solving a system of linear equations in two videos. The first video will discuss some elementary techniques that you may have learned in your earlier classes. The first method I would like to choose is called Kramer's Rule. And its uh, principle is as follows. So if I write this system of equations in the form of a matrix, it would look like this. I'd get 2, 5, 1, 1, 1, 2, 4, 0, because there is no y term, 20, multiplying x, y, z is equal to 2, 1, 12. Now what Kramer proved, and you can find this proof in any textbook of linear algebra, I won't be proving it here, is you can solve for x, y, and z as follows. Now if I call this the vector a1, column vector a1 and this the column vector a2 column vector a3 and that's xyz as it is and uh, 2 1 and 12 I'll call the coefficient vector k so these are all column vectors for example a1 would be written like that and the coefficient matrix would be a column vector and it would look like that. These are all matrices which are three rows by one column or three by one matrices. And they're called, sometimes they're called column vectors. So if you have this notation, then Kramer's rule says the solution for your unknowns, x, y, and z, are given as follows x is given by the determinant of the coefficient vector, the vector a2, vector a3, divided by the determinant of the entire matrix. Let me call this matrix A. So that will be the determinant of A. And similarly, the y and z are the determinants of a1, k, a3, divided by the determinant of the matrix A, and the z value is a1, a2, k, divided by the determinant of A. So it's a very straightforward procedure. I didn't mean to put the bar there. So let's try to do this for this problem. So first of all, the determinants of all these matrices have to be evaluated. Let me evaluate the determinant of A to show how that is, or rather remind you how that is done. So if you want to find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, such as this one, you would first assemble the same entries as the matrix but this time using vertical pipes. Now there's a assignment of sign edge. The signs you'll give are going to be plus, minus, plus. Now the, the signs are determined by the following rule. It's going to be negative 1 times i plus j, where i is the row number and j is the column number. So this has row number 1, row number 2, row number 3, column number 1, column number 2, column number 3. So for example, this entry has got row number 1 and column number 1. So for that, I'll get minus 1 to the power 1 plus 1 or minus 1 squared, which is the plus sign. That's why I got the plus sign there. Let's try that one. That's going to be minus 1, the first row, second column. So it's 1 plus 2. 
which is minus 1 to the power 3, and that's why I have a minus sign there, and so on. Once you have this sign assignment done, then the rules of the determinant are as follows. You simply take the 2 with the plus sign, and then write whatever does not appear either horizontally or vertically below the 2. So if this is a game of chess, that would be the rook or the castle. So the surviving pieces are 1, 2, 0, and 20. Well, write them down. Then we play the same game with the remaining values. So I get minus 5, and this leaves us 1, 2, 4, 20. And then plus 1 times 1, 1, 4, 0. Okay, now we can play the same game again. So that gives you a plus sign, minus sign, plus, minus, plus, minus. And you can expand it again like that. Uh, but it's really the same as doing 1 times 20 minus 2 times 0. So you can do it that way too. So this is 2 times 20 minus 0 minus 5 times 20 minus 8 plus 1 times 0 minus 4. So that's 40 and that's um, six, well, 12 fives are 60. which is negative 24. And this had better be let not equal to 0, otherwise Kramer's rule will not work. If the denominator is 0, Kramer's rule will not work. But since it's not 0, Kramer's rule will work. So what I'm going to do next is to uh, apply Kramer's rule exactly as written there. So I'll write the values of x, y, and z. x will be equal to the determinant of k, which is 2, 1, 12, and the rest of it remains the same. Divided by the determinant of a, which we have found, which is negative 24. Now I'm not going to show you how these are done. It's exactly the same as that. I'll just write the answer as negative 2. Why? will be the determinant of keep the first thing the same, replace the second column by k, and the third one the same. This turns out to be plus 1. And the z value, well this time you keep this and this the same, and only change the third column to the coefficient column vector. Divide it still by minus 24. And this, it turns out, is plus 1. So we have solved the entire system. Now that's one of the simplest methods that you can use to solve a system of equations. It's very, um, it's very robotic and it requires almost no thinking, it's just executing steps. The second method is slightly more um, intuitive and sometimes it can be quicker. And this is called the method of Gauss-Jordan elimination. It's one of the first things that you learn in a course in linear algebra, if you take it with a mathematics department. Uh, it's sometimes called the row reduction method. So what you do here, you can reduce using columns too, but usually row reduction is used. You write the entire system, 
just like that uh, determinant but without putting anything in brackets so you write it as 251 remember this is the system 251 112 4020 and the coefficient matrix you write on the right side 2112 now what we're going to do is perform what are called row reduction operations so the purpose of these operations is to get most of the entries to be zero except for the diagonal and then we have solved our problem as you'll find out so what I'll do is I'll first take the third row and divide it by four I'll indicate these row operations with an arrow so when I do that I'll, I'll get the first two rows will remain unchanged the last one will be 105 this way we have removed the awkward large numbers that occur here now if I I have to do the same thing to the coefficient uh, vector also. So that's 2, 1, 3. The next step, I notice I have a 1 here and a 1 here, so maybe I can get rid of that. The aim is to bring this to diagonal form, so you need to get rid of things to the left first. So I'll take R3 to R3 minus R2. So that's going to give me 2, 5, 1. second row will be the same and the third row if I take R3 minus R2 I'm going to get 0 and then this minus that negative 1 5 minus 2 is 3 remember I have to play the same game with the coefficient vector so that's going to be 2 1 2 because 3 minus 1 is what I'm doing well that looks good I've got 1 0 now I still have to get rid of the middle term for the diagonal to work so what I'll do next is the following row reduction I'll take R3 to R2 minus half R1 <clears throat> so uh, I'm sorry, I should have taken R2. R2 to R2 minus half R1. Let's try that. The R1 will remain the same, but R2 is being taken to R2 minus half R1, which means that I'll lose the first term exactly as I want. The terms to the left are not good. Then I have negative 3 halves and positive 3 halves because half r1 is 5 halves 5 halves 1 minus 5 halves is minus 3 halves and that's going to be 1 2 minus 1 half which is 3 halves the row 3 is written intact now you do the same thing to the coefficient matrix also if i subtract 1 from half of 2 i'll get 0 so it's beginning to look nicer and nicer for the next step I will take again I'll deal with R3 now I want to get rid of the middle term so what I'll do is I'll take R3 to R3 minus two-thirds R2 let's try that next so the first row remains the same the second row remains the same When I take two thirds of R2, that exactly cancels three halves. And then when I subtract it, I get zero. So I get zero, zero, and two thirds of three halves, and subtract, I'll get two here. The coefficient matrix is unaffected because the second row is zero. So I'll write the, uh, the coefficient vector or matrix just like that. Now what we have done here, we can keep going like this and get these, now we can start working on these and start getting these to be zero and then we just have the diagonal term and the answer will be there, right there. But that's too many steps and at this point usually when it's uh, in this form, this is sometimes called the upper triangular form. 
for obvious reasons, because the upper triangular entries are non-zero and the lower triangular entries are zero. We usually stop when it's an upper triangular form. Let's write out the results so far. So the equations look like, first of all, the easiest one is 2x3 equals 2. Now, uh, I'm writing it as x1, x2, and x3, but that's really z, so I'll write it as 2z equal to 2, which means that z equals 1. Well, that's exactly what we have there. Once you have z equals 1, you can find out what y will be. This tells me that 3 halves, negative 3 halves y plus 3 halves z must equal 0. So that's only possible if z is equal to 1. That's only possible if y also is equal to 1, which agrees with that. Once you have z and y equal to 1, you can immediately solve for x. So that's 2x plus 5y plus z equals 2. Now remember x and y and z are both 1, so that's going to be 6. So 6, if I take it to the other side, it's going to be minus 4, and minus 4 divided by 2 is just minus 2. In this way, we get the same results as the Kramer's rule.